Hello. This week's episode is 90 Years Without Slumbering, and it's about a grandfather clock. Tick-tock, tick-tock. And it it stars Ed Wynn, um, who most of you would probably know as, uh, as uh, one of the characters in the Mary Poppins movie, the original Mary Poppins movie. Uh, he also voiced the Mad Hatter in the uh, animated Alice in Wonderland, also a Disney classic. Uh, he does a great job here. He he was just wonderful all around uh, in most of his parts. Very eccentric. Uh, he plays very eccentric very well. So, um, uh, George Clayton Johnson, who wrote the story, uh, he isn't credited as as his as himself, but instead as a Johnson Smith. And it is because of a disagreement with the production team that he didn't want his name in this. So. He actually wrote a whole bunch of uh, Twilight Zone episodes, including uh, Game of Pool um, and some others. And he also wrote several sci-fi movies, including Logan's Run, which you haven't. If you haven't watched it, you should go do that. And uh, that's a great movie. Um, hi. Um, there's a cat right there. Um, so uh, he did not like uh, that they rewrote the ending. Uh, and objected to that, so he didn't want his name on this piece. The the episode itself is is it has a fairly expansive cast. I mean, it's not hundreds of people, but it's not like the last episode, which only had three. Uh, it, it does have a few different characters in it. Uh, Carolyn Kearney, I think her name is, uh, who plays the granddaughter. I don't think she acted in anything else. I haven't seen her in anything else. Um, whereas her, her husband and the, the doctor at least did some other parts. And, uh, it's, it's not a big episode. It, it has three sets, right? And it's some part shot on the back, back lot. Not a big deal. Um, and it has a shaky dissolve when the clock is sold and, and you see it fading away against the, the painting in the background. It actually, they, they mismatch slightly. So it shakes. Difficult to catch uh, in miniature, but it's there. Um, then when when Grandpa leaves to go wind up the clock in the middle of the night, they have a three-element dissolve. Uh, so normally you have a dissolve from one to another, or, uh, you know, scene transition. Or you can have something overlaying on something else to show passage of time or or impending doom or something but here you have him walking down the stairs the clock and him walking down the street all in the same shot without getting too muddled so good job and he smashed the window very easily i must say and uh, and then gets escorted back home now he's in the bed and the granddaughter sort of tucks him in and they turn off the light now they can't just turn off the light because then, then it, it's not a natural light on the set. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other lights to give enough light for the camera. So when she turns off that light, you turn on another set of lights to make sort of a night shade thing. And if you do that well, you don't catch the transition. But here you can definitely tell uh, in, in this shot. Um, and then, of course, you have a... a freeze shot of, of the spirit rising and they have this conversation it's just you know double exposure stuff it's really it's neat though and uh but the the end of the story is supposed to be when the clock stops the old man dies and and uh, george Clayton johnson he did not like that he got a second lease on life and that's why he got his his name taken off um but that's that's how the story ends in this episode Next week is Ring-A-Ding Girl, and I look forward to seeing you then. Take care now.